Let's go back to 1992. Let's uh, um, talk about what are your remembrances or reflections on, on that first race on concrete in 92. Kyle, we'll start with you. I think you were in that race and had a good run. I never had a good run at Bristol, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's what, so, so the two things I remember was um, how rough it was. Uh, honestly, when we first got here, if everybody remembers when we first went out, um, you just talked about how this place just chattered your teeth in, in that car. Um, and they did a lot of work on this racetrack. They ground, they, they put down rubber. I mean, they did everything they could uh, to make it happen. Um, and, and we'd never seen anything like this, really. You know what I mean? I mean, you, you come in here, you didn't think they were going to be able to put up concrete. Um, and, and they did, but it was just, it was the roughness and the abrasiveness of what the racetrack was. The other thing was, I, is this is just a, a, a stupid cow petty thing. Um, watching the race, uh, I can't re I think the Saturday race, um, and listening on TV or radio, I can't remember which one it was, so I don't want to call anybody out in particular, but somebody spun for like the first time on TV, and the smoke uh, had a like a greenish hue to it as they and they were like look at that When you spin on concrete the concrete makes a green smoke First when you spin rubber makes the smoke not the concrete <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You, it's the rubber. That's where the smoke comes from But it was so funny because everything that happened on concrete appeared to be Different than what it did on on the asphalt, but once the race started it wasn't it wasn't it was just a racetrack yeah, thank you, Kyle King. Uh, Richard, what about your thoughts? And you, you uh, retired at the end of 1992, so yeah, this would this would have been August. I was so busy just doing everything, except the racetrack, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't remember. I know uh, the old 92 season was just a fog. Uh, I was busy doing all the retirement part and all that, and my racing deal was just a sideline. And uh, you know. I guess we're so busy up here. I, I really don't remember the race. I know I didn't finish very good, but I never finished very good in 92 anyway. But uh, I, if there was a wreck out there, I probably got into it. So, uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, by the time they first started this track, it was one way, uh, kind of a pretty nice racetrack. And then they banked it a little bit, and then they changed it again. And uh, I was... <laughs> I never won a lot of races. I'd won three races, I think, in uh, 75 or 76, somewhere along there. And uh, other than that, my finishes at Bristol, I never looked forward to going to Bristol because I never finished good. <laughs> Yep. Well, it was certainly certainly a, a different animal, a, a, although you had so much success everywhere else you went and uh, did win here, I think, three times, as you said. Well, sp uh, how about a nine-time winner? Richard Childress Racing has won here nine times. And, R.C., uh, your thoughts about 92, uh, if you remember back then, or, or basically them changing this track to concrete? You know, it's uh, kind of go along with Kyle there. I can remember that tire wear was one of our same as we have today. Uh, tire wear was one thing we were all worried about, and Dale was driving the car, and uh, he wasn't a big fan of concrete, I can tell you. 92 wasn't a good year for us either, you know. We'd won championships in 90, 91, 93, 94, but you had those off years. But it was different, you know, even just like Martinsville, we have concrete today in Bristol, I mean, uh, Dover. Dover. It's a different animal that takes a little different thinking and set up. But I got to sit here and think about, as a driver, my favorite, most memorable trip up here was when I drove the King's car back in the 70s. He <laughs> gave out or something happened. He was sick. I can't remember what happened. But I never will forget them cramming cushions in behind me. Old Dale Inman cramming <laughs> pillows behind me where I could reach the pedals. But we did okay, didn't we, King? <laughs> That's one of my favorite memories as a driver. That's great, R.C. And, uh, Joe, your thoughts about uh, 92 concrete or this track since? Yeah, I, actually, I think that was our first year, if I got this right. And uh, Dale Jarrett's driving the car, and it was our best finish that we had for the entire year. We didn't win a race. We were getting kicked all over the place. <laughs> And I remember Dale, though, said he loved this place, and we finished second. And so that was my first memory of being here. The second thing that happened, we started our drag racing team, 
and we were back here, back here. you know, yeah. this thing is awesome. When you hear those top fuel cars and stuff go through there, and the sound and everything from that is unreal. We finished our NHRA deal after four years, and we set a record. We blew up more stuff than anybody's <laughs> ever seen. So that was second. So let me give you my personal favorite memory of Bristol. We came here. Norm Miller came with me, our founding sponsor, with his wife. And so we had helicoptered in. And so after the race, it got foggy. And they said, the helicopters are done. And I said, oh, my gosh, now what are we going to do? And we started walking, and we went all the way down the hill, and we went down to the service station at the bottom of the hill down there. So I look, and there's this kid with a pickup truck. And so I walked over to him, and I said, hey, you want to make 100 bucks?" And he went, yeah. I said, do you know where the <laughs> airport is? And he goes, yeah. We got in back of the pickup, <laughs> and we're driving. Let, let me say this. It was a memory I'll never forget because <laughs> it was kind of foggy, and in the, in the, in the, we were in to those valleys going into complete fog, coming out the other side, a beautiful moon there. I think it was one of the prettiest rides that we ever had. And we went for 45 minutes, and next thing you know, poop, we popped up right at the racetrack. So that's my most favorite memory. I think we almost got rid of our sponsor, but other than that, we're OK. I, I, I got to say, so it, favorite memory, I, I'm going to throw one in here. So I'm out, I'm typical. I think we'd switch to Dodge. I blew up or wrecked or something. And um, Danny Lawrence come out. I was, I was changing clothes out in the van, out in the bus. And Danny Lawrence said, Kevin's sick. Harvick is sick. Can you come, want to come get in Kevin's car? And I'm like, my left butt cheek wouldn't fit in the seat of Kevin Harvick. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that's how simple it was. I mean, I want you to think about Kevin when he started. I came down here, and y'all crammed me in that car. And I, I, was, I drove the whole, whatever part of it I drove, I drove the last part of the race. Um, on my left side, I sat on my left cheek with my right foot facing this way, and I'd gas and brake with the, with the same, because I couldn't use my left leg at all in the car. And uh, it, we went out. I, I, I didn't wreck. That was all you were supposed to do. When you were leaving, <laughs> well, when you because y'all were in the points, y'all were trying. To, you had to get some points. But it was that was the coolest thing was to, was to be able to get in in your car in a children's car uh, up here. I, I relief drove for him one time. Um, and what's for Bonnet up here for Neil? So got to drive one of Junior's cars up here. So that was, those are two good memories for me up here. Hey, King, do you have a memory? Do you have a favorite memory overall? Of, of, he never, of, listen, he never relief drove for anybody. He just yes, mailed and run out of things. People got in his car. He didn't get in somebody else's car. I got in Pearson's car. One oh! Time. Yeah. Did I you did. really? Yeah, I don't know what happened. But yeah. uh, and I got in uh, some boys from Virginia somewhere. Anyhow, yeah. <laughs> I got in his car. And I'm like you, I, I couldn't get I couldn't get down in the in the seat, so I was just sitting up on top of it. I think I drove about maybe 150 laps and stuff. Told guys I got to get out of this thing. I'm I'm suffering more than a car. Is. So uh, you know, uh, other than that, uh, I, I I just remember how many times I wrecked up here, <laughs> and probably half the time it was my fault. But uh, it was a very um, at that particular time, the drivers didn't have the seats, they didn't have the stuff around their neck, all that stuff. And uh, I know the first first time we run up, or one of the times we run up here, my neck gave out with me, and I was going around the track like this. And so uh, I don't even think we had, we didn't have radios at that time. And uh, anyhow, somehow or another, me and Dale communicated, and uh, so. <laughs> I said, okay, we've got to do something to prop my neck up. And uh, at that time, the tires came in with an extra deal in and had a, a rubber around the, the uh, wheel, just just a rubber band. And Dale said, 
I came down pit road with my arm out the window because what they done, they pulled that thing up, put it around my arm here, and then wrapped it around my head so that I could hold the thing up. Wow. So that was uh, that was the first neck neck restriction, yeah, I guess. First time. <laughs> the the handmade, the we, homemade Hans device. We, we, we yeah, ahead that's of it. our time. That's it. Hey, uh, we we got to wrap this up, but I want to ask one more question because I've asked this to RC. We've asked it when we're sitting there relaxing uh, with a beverage or two in the past. But uh, two of the big memories here at Bristol were the three car uh, and Terry Labonte, Dale and Terry. And Richard, your take uh, in those 95 and again in 99, did Dale do anything wrong? Never. In my eyes, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you a quick story. I know we all got a good work here, but uh, after one of those wrecks that I don't forget which one that uh, Dale and Terry got into it. I think we won the race, and Mike Skinner was driving for me. And I did an autograph session at Lowe's, and I left there, and I come back, and I stopped at a Hardy's there to get me a sandwich go down the road. And I walked in this, I can't, mature lady. They're mature now at my age. So <laughs> this mature lady come up to me, and she said, I hate you, and I hate that driver. I thought she was going to whip me right there. <laughs> That's my memory of Yeah, we had some fun up here. Yeah, yeah. I, need to be, I need to be Richard's PR person for a minute. He meant to say incident. He didn't mean to say Rex. He meant to say after the second incident, not it's after a wreck. Yeah. It was not a wreck. Yeah. Well, Terry, yeah. Rex. Let's clarify that. That's right. That's true. Yeah, That's never true. admit any guilt when, <laughs> when, when all you're really doing is rattling someone's case. That's true. Okay. That's an incident. Yeah. That's yeah. An incident. Well, guys, thanks so much for, for taking the time to come out and talk about the great memories of Bristol and the concrete, because folks, the concrete is back, and we're turning back the clock to 92, and hopefully we're going to have a, a race that's even better than what we've seen Ready. in the past here today for the Food City 500. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Right, yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Yeah.